Good evening. I'm going to tell you more about our biobanks and some of the genomic research that have already been done. To do genomic research or estimate genomic breeding values, you need pedigrees, performance data, and records of many animals. It also takes years to collect sufficient data, especially for reproduction. You also need a biological sample, for instance, blood, tissue, or hair, to obtain DNA of the animal. All these can be achieved through a biological bank with reference populations for the different breeds. In 2004, the Gary Biobank was established when the need for a biobank for Angora goats was identified in discussions with the University of Pretoria. Four industry and two research flocks were included in the bank. In 2006, it was decided to include sheep breeds in the biobank. The Merino, Afrino and the Makwa Afrikaner research flocks of Gary was included in 2006. Subsequently, the Duny Merino breed was included in 2009 and the Meat Masters in 2010. In 2012, the Elsenberg Biobank was established at the Elsenberg Directory of Animal Science, and all their research flocks were included in their biobank. A project was established in 2014 for a merino reference population. In addition to the merino research flocks that were already part of the biobanks, two industry flocks were included in the Gaddy Biobank and two in the Elsenberg Biobank. Blood samples from high-impact sires were also included in the banks. The objectives of the biobanks are to maintain a resource or reference flocks of the various small stock breeds, to collect and store blood samples from animals in the flocks, to develop and maintain a database of pedigrees and performance data, and to provide biological material and data to South African research institutions. These are the number of animals with blood samples in the Gary Biobank. I just want to mention that we store four subsamples for every animal. Okay, you can see that we have samples from 18,000 merino sheep from four different flocks. We also have um, samples from 11,000 Duny Merino um, animals from three different flocks, samples from 3,700 Afrino sheep, from 2,615 Amakwa Afrikaner sheep from three different flocks, and samples from 5,500 meat master sheep for a total of 41,000 sheep samples. Then we also have samples from 20,700 Angora goats. These are the samples from the Elsenberg Biobank. They also have samples from 8,700 merino sheep from five flocks, the three research flocks, as well as two industry flocks. They also have some samples from dormer sheep, SI mutton merino sheep, and then some samples from various other breeds for a total of 11,500 samples. The following phenotypic performance data are recorded in all the flocks that are part of the biobanks. These are the full pedigrees, body weight of ewes before mating, reproduction data of the ewes, birth weights, body weight at weaning and later ages, body weight, fleece weight and fleece samples of young animals at selection age, subjective and objective wool and conformation traits at selection age, fleece weight and fleece samples of use at shearing, and then parasite-resistant traits in some of the flocks. 
these data are either stored at Grootfontein or Elsenburg or on logics for the flocks that are part of the National Small Stock Improvement Scheme. Now to do genomic research or SMI genomic breeding values, you need the genotype of the animals. Now the, here are the number of merino sheep of the various flocks which have already been genotyped with the 50k B chips. Um, you see we have around 3,000 merino genotypes available at the moment. Then we also have some genotypes available from, from other breeds. Um, there are 1,265 genotypes. Um, those are from the Duny Merino, South African Mutton Merino, Dormer, Afrino, Meatmaster, Dorper, Namako Africana, Damara, Pedi, and the Black Headed Persian. Now, these blood samples, genotype, and performance data of the animals in the biobank have already been used by SA researchers from seven research institutes or universities for 20 projects. Now, as you can see, um, 11 of these projects were or are being done on sheep. Now, eight of these um, include merino, merino sheep. You can also see that many of these projects involve um, postgraduate students. Many of the genomic studies um, are basic research and don't have a direct practical application, just as was the case with quantitative genetics. For example, before you can estimate blood blob breeding values, you have to know which models to use, and this needs some basic research. Now, the same applies for genomic research. Now, the scope of the studies done to date varies. varies. Some of the studies um, dealt with genetic diversity. Now, genetic diversity gives you an idea of the amount of variation that's in a specific breed of flock and also the level of inbreeding. Now, the studies done um, indicated that there is enough genetic diversity in the breeds studied uh, and that selection progress in those breeds, breeds of flock, flocks is possible. Now, you need genetic diversity to make selection progress. Furthermore, studies in Angora goats that were done on genetic markers led to the identification of the sub-17 mutation, which is related to hardiness. And this resulted in a breeding plan for selection against goats carrying the ACS minus gene. Furthermore, QTLs were identified for fiber traits and body weight in Angora goats. Two studies were done in which the Illumina 50k sheep and goat chips were verified for use in the South African breeds. Now, not all our local breeds were included when the, the respective chips were developed, but these studies showed that the chips can be used for most of our, our local breeds. Three projects were done on, on the detection of selection signatures and genome-wide association. These include studies on the reproduction in the high and low merino flocks, reproduction and body weight in merino and afrino flocks, and parasite resistance in duny merino sheep. Now, these studies tell us if selection for certain traits took place and which genes or areas on the chromosome are linked to certain traits. 
It also helps us to understand the underlying mechanisms involved in quantitative trades. Current studies also include the estimation of genomic breeding values. Now, genomic breeding values increase the accuracy of selection, especially for traits such as reproduction. Now, projects here include the first genomic breeding value analysis for the South African Marina breed, which SI Statbook will report on tonight, and then an investigation into possible cross-country analysis using South African and Australian Merino data. These are the projects in which Merino genotypes of the different flocks were used. You can see that the Craddock and Grootfontein flock genotypes were included in all eight Merino projects. So thus, although genotyping is expensive, once the genotype is available, it can be used for numerous projects. Okay, I will give you some more detail on some of the projects that have been done. The first is a GWA study including reproduction and body weight in Merino and Afrino sheep. It was done as an MSc at University of Pretoria. Now, 130 genotypes from the Grootfontein Merino stud. 129 genotypes from the Craddock Fine will start, and 152 genotypes from the Carnarvon Afrino flock were used in the study. Traits included were body weight, number of lambs born, number of lambs weaned, and total weight of lambs weaned. Okay, this graph illustrates genetic relationship among the animals in the three flocks. These um, are the Afrino animals, and we can see they cluster quite separately from the Merino animals, me meaning they are genetically different from the two Merino flocks. These yellow ones is the Craddock Merino animals, and these green ones the Grootfontein Merino animals. You can see that the Grootfontein Merino animals, there are a bit more variation within that flock than in the Craddock flock. Also, um, there is a bit of overlap between the Grootfontein and Carrock animals. This is due to the same sires that were used in the two flocks with the aim of creating a genetic linkage between the flocks. With this study, SNPs associated with the various traits were identified. Um, these are the genes and SNPs associated with reproduction in the Grootfontein Merino's Merino flock. Now, after the SNPs has been identified, um, we went and then identified the genes that were close to the SNPs on the specific chromosomes. In other words, the genes that were associated with the specific SNPs and thus also associated with the specific traits. Now, in this study, there were some genes that were associated with number of lambs born and total weight of lambs weaned in the Grootfontein Merino flock. Um, in the Craddock uh, fine wolf flock, there were also some genes, um, especially on chromosome 1, that were associated with number of lambs weaned and number of lambs born that um, need some further um, in investigation. Fewer genes in both the Grootfontein Merino flock and the Craddock Farnwell flock were um, identified in this study that were linked to body weight um, than for the reproductive traits. But um, most of those genes that I've showed you in the previous um, slides influence both the reproductive traits and body weight traits. So that indicates that the continuous long-term selection for body weight and reproductive traits in these specific flocks have favored the genes that influence both these traits.
traits, both body weight and reproductive traits. Now, in total, um, there were 17 genes that were identified from the results of this study, but also from evidence from other studies that needs some further um, investigation. And um, what we are going to do is a more comprehensive um, GWAS study that will include all the, all the available uh, Merino genotypes um, that we have to date. Another study is a, um, a current project um, that is done as a PhD study by Nelius Nell at the Stellenbosch University and that investigates possible across country genomic prediction using South African and Australian merino sheep data. Now genotypes included in this study is Grootfontein merino flock, Craddock final flock, the Elsenberg High Low Selection flock, Langevens merino flock, the four industry flocks as well as all the industry sires. The aim with this um, study is to develop further systems for estimating um, genomic breeding values uh, for South African merinos. In this graph, um, the genetic relationships among the South African and Australian merino bloodlines is illustrated. You can see here uh, lies all the Elsenberg um, animals. This light green yellowish color is the Grootfontein animals. The red ones is the Craddock animals and that green ones there is the um, South African industry animals. You can see there is some overlap um, here between these, these three um, flocks or three groupings and that this is favorable in terms of our um, reference population. The, the, these blue ones are the um, ultra-fine Australian animals and these yellow ones is the fine medium Australian animals. You can also see that these two um, cluster near to the Craddock fine wolf flock. And this is uh, favorable in terms of the possible um, cross-country analysis. Uh, the one that's lying here is... Uh, a bit separate from the others is uh, the Australian fine medium one and the one that's that's totally genetically different from the others is the Australian strong wall animals. Um, and Elias is still busy with this research and should be finished by the end of the year or early next year. Another current study involves a genome-wide search for genetic markers associated with resistance to Imonges in Duny Merino sheep. Genotypes of the Grootfontein and Walpi Duny Merino flocks are included in the study. Traits analyzed are fecal air count, FAMACHA score and body condition score. Here is a genetic relationship among the Gary and Walpi animals. You can see here is the Gary animals. They cluster separately from the wild pea animals. All these are the wild pea animals. You can see here are two distinct groupings. The yellow ones is a line that was selected for increased resistance to Imonges, um, and all the animals from these, all the progeny from these sires cluster here, while all the progeny from the other sires cluster separately. What this indicates is that here is distinct genetic differences between these two lines. Again from this study um, there was also some SNPs and the genes associated with the SNPs um, for fecal air count, count identified in this study. Um, further analysis um, for the study is, is currently still underway. Another project that received 
Genotypes from the biobanks is the implementation of genomic breeding values for the SA Merino breed. All these analyses were done by SA Statbook. Note, 1,409 genotypes were provided to Statbook for these analyses. These include genotypes from the Grootfontein Merino Stat, the Craddock Fineworm Merino Stat, genotypes from the stats of Mr. Eric Nodier and Mr. Jeff Kingwell, as well as all available um, high-impact sire genotypes. The pedigrees and performance data from the logic database were used for this analysis. A statbook will report on this project later tonight. Okay, as far as the way forward is concerned, um, we should keep maintaining the existing biobanks. We should also try and expand the biobanks by including more informative animals and including more animals less related to the current animals in the reference population in order to increase the accuracy of GEBVs. Furthermore, with regard to performance data, an effort should be made to make sure that the recorded reproduction data are complete. In other words, complete records from mating up until weaning should be submitted. And an effort then should also be made to record carcass traits and disease-related traits for a reference population to enable the estimation of GEBVs for these kind of traits. I just want to thank the following people for their contribution to the bank and all the research projects. It's Marius van Heerden and his team for blood collection for the Gary Biobank and Ansi Scholes and her team for blood collection for the Elsenberg Bank, and then Elmarie Killian and her team for blood process, processing for the Gary Biobank. Then I also sincerely want to thank all the farmers for all their work in collection of all the data, and then all the people at all the research station, stations for the collection of the data on those flocks. Furthermore, all the contributions of the scientists and students at the various research institutes and universities um, for doing all the research projects. Thank you.